So today we'll be uh, opening up with a kind of introduction to, especially for those of you joining from iGEM teams this year in 2020, we, uh, we've been working towards how we can provide tools and resources for iGEMers to work alongside uh, the SDGs and working on the Jogal platform to facilitate this. Uh, so we'll be joined initially by some panelists, a quick discussion around uh, how synthetic biology can help contribute to meeting, meeting the sustainable goals. Um, how open science supports this and builds on top of it uh, and what advice we can give for the current teams uh, as they go through through the process um, so yeah to, to quickly give an introduction uh, from anyone who's joining for the first time iGEM is uh, is the world's largest community of synthetic biologists and uh, what we we're best known for is the iGEM competition where we work with uh, junior researchers around the world providing kind of a an initial challenge and kind of, kind of almost write a passage into synthetic biology where we we uh, we give the uh, a, an open registry of parts for teams to build upon and collaborate as they contribute to creating uh, biobricks parts of the synthetic biology open library uh, and each year teams do more and more uh, impressive stuff as the as the field has developed uh, and so they become closer and closer to applied research and applied science and so many of these we see already working towards very interesting aspects in uh, challenges in water food health uh, and all sorts of other areas relating to the environmental and sustainable causes um, i don't know if uh, mark you want to give an introduction to jogel uh, but i can also briefly summarize it as a, a online platform to facilitate the collaboration of open research and science but uh, mark in your own words i, I think that you're very good at that right? <laughs> uh yes I, I think juggle is it's it's we, we try to think of it as a as a research institute for open distributed science uh, it it's it has a platform as a tool for that allows people to uh to give visibility to their projects, to connect uh, with each other and find team members, find collaborators uh, to, to bring their idea to the, to the next level uh, with the idea uh, in mind that the, the projects uh, subscribe to some, to some SDGs that they're trying to solve. Uh, so the platform is here in order to allow people to collaborate uh, and, and it's a tool for, for enhancing the collaboration, but we also have uh, a whole coordination team that allows to drive research programs uh, and, and we can talk about it later but we had one uh, around uh, COVID, the open COVID program, we had one around vaccination, the co-immune program and these programs they consist of, of events, they consist of, uh, uh, of uh, put, creating contacts between mentors uh, and between students uh, so there's a learning aspect to it as well uh, and so, so there's a human side of coordination and, and a toolkit side of, of platform that allows to kind of uh, lubricate the, the, the social network uh, and with the idea in mind to be inclusive of any profile, uh, academic or non-academic, uh, and, and uh, to the open science. And, and especially we have a strong, uh, uh, how to say, uh, focus on communities that didn't necessarily find the institutionalization uh, in the past uh, decade or two decades and communities such as the DIY bio movement or the makers that are operating in this kind of like uh, non-institutional uh, places and that are using new tools to actually develop their community uh, and their collaborations. Uh, and uh, yeah, so I'm happy that we can, like this juggle was, a iGEM was an absolute inspiration for making juggles. So I'm very happy that we can kind of join the two ends. <laughs> And, um, and, and we've come together to collaborate around this year's iGEM competition and the uh, working towards the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. So the UN set the 17 uh, kind of goals that are very useful as an open framework and kind of a metric of how we're doing towards making the world a more sustainable and hopefully more just place. Uh, so we're joined today by Todd Kuken, who is, uh, is leading the iGEM SDG subcommittee. Maybe Todd, you can say a little bit about uh, the subcommittee's work this year, the ambition behind what we're working on, and uh, a little bit about the SDGs. Sure, so um, we have, in essence, a, a small task for, for the iGEM community and as well as the, the Jogal community moving forward, which is 
we need your help to help us actually begin to meet the sustainable development goals um, that the UN has set forth. Um, and the way that we're trying to do that this year is we've developed a, a special prize this year for the iGEM competition specifically around the sustainability development goals. So what we're hoping to do is to have teams really begin to focus their projects on meeting one, two, three of these SDGs, but also evaluate them across other SDGs um, in terms of their impact. So what we're hoping is that your projects will not just show impact potentially this year, but that future teams can build upon your work combine your work with other teams to really begin to move forward in meeting the, the SDG challenges that, that the world faces. Um, so I'm, I'm really excited that we're doing this partnership with Jogal um, so we can sort of continue that work after your project is finished this year. And so hopefully you can continue to build upon that, but uh, you can invite others to work on your project um, as well. Great, and um, I think uh, Ojas, you've prepared some slides to quickly introduce us to the challenge today, um, but we also have some panelists joining us, which I'll introduce afterwards. Yeah, um, mostly I have the slides just uh, to talk about um, the collaboration in general and how IGEM has been contributing to the open science community and Jogal as well, and how uh, they fit well together. So. This is more for the IGMAs to be clear about um, the collaboration and the mission as well. So I would like um, so for the today's event, which is the launch event for the IGM 2020 and Jogal collaboration and towards uh, sustainable development goals, particularly. And I would just like to briefly talk about how IGM Foundation has um, been dedicating uh, it's a mission to advance the synthetic biology and to build an open community uh, that can collaborate to solve uh, the most pressing issues of the mankind. It started from five teams and now has around 353 teams from across the globe. So we have access to a global community of young scientists uh, who work towards uh, different projects or solve local and global problems every year. And now the flagship program of, I, uh, of IGEM Foundation, which is the IGEM competition, hosts around 6,000 participants and has now flourished a community of around 40,000 after IGEMers. So it's not just current IGEMers, but also a community of after IGEMers that uh, is flourishing and can con potentially contribute towards the sustainable development goals. Furthermore, uh, these are the various programs of the IGEM Foundation. Um, but particularly what we have to uh, notice is that all of these programs and also the IGEM competition in itself prioritize an open documentation and uh, collaboration. One of the major sources of uh, data collection at IGEM is IGEM Team Wikis. So since the uh, introduction of the competition, uh, each year, all the IGEM teams who work on their project have to upload all of the content that they generate into the IGEM server. And this content then stays there as uh, an open uh, source knowledge for other teams to build on that or for other people to build on that. So this has uh, led to a huge data collection in the IGEM uh, server which is accessible by everyone. Next is uh, the IGEM mission towards the launch of IGEM registry of standard biological parts. So this registry has now a collection of around 20,000 documented genetic parts and more keep adding on each year. This, <clears throat> this registry has uh, an open access to all the IGEM teams and the academic labs and characterizes all the biological parts based on part type, chassis, uh, or the organism, and the function. So these two are the two more um, really uh, big open uh, uh, initiatives towards open science from IGEM. Now coming down to Jogal, as uh, Mark just introduced, it's a not-for-profit organization. 
and it is involved in um, uh, facilitating uh, research and innovation in a more distributed and open manner such that teams uh, from all across the globe and different countries can work together in a collaborative manner to uh, do a project or to solve a global issue. It particularly encourages open science and uh, also that the teams develop solution towards sustainable development goals. So you can see how uh, the mission of Jogal very much aligns well with the mission of IGEM in general. And that is why it was uh, natural for us to collaborate, uh, especially in the IGEM 2020 year, where uh, amidst the pandemic, a lot of people or IGEM teams are facing problems to go into the lab or produce data. And there's all the more need for collaborations. So particularly, uh, this is a sustainable development goal mission. So we have the 17 goals and the mission is how can we encourage IGEM teams to address these goals either directly or indirectly. And uh, we have uh, the main people involved behind this, uh, the co-founders Thomas and Mark from Jogel, Will, um, the moderator for today's panel, and as an ambassador, me and Nana, along with the Sustainable Development Goals Subcommittee at IGEM. So, that is uh, basically briefing about the IGEM mission and the collaboration. And yeah, now we can maybe move on to the panel discussion directly. Yes, thank you Otis for the introduction there. And yes, it's very much our hope that the collaboration of biology may hold many of the, uh, the, the answers to some of these goals that we aim for and mm -hmm. some of the contributions of that. So to help us answer some of those questions today, we're joined by an expert panel. Uh, we're joined by Mark Buckley, uh, who is a uh, part of the expert network of the World Economic Forum. Uh, Todd Kuken, the co-chair of the Sustainable Development Committee at iGEM. Mark Santanini, uh, co-founder of Chogel. Alex Nielsen uh, of Rebels, and hopefully Alicia of the French Association for Synthetic Biology. Um, so maybe uh, in that order, could, if each of the panelists can make a brief introduction to themselves uh, and their attachments and interest in open science, bio, and uh, the sustainable goals. Hello, my name is Mark Buckley. And thank you for the invite and um, brief introduction. I'm a United Nations Sustainable Development Goal Advocate. I also work on four other major projects within the United Nations and advise and consult them. I've been at uh, all the COP conferences, uh, the Conference of the Party since COP 17. And um, I'm so glad to be here to discuss uh, synthetic biology and iGEM and Joggles work towards achieving the sustainable development goals and, and how um, that can be done. I'm also uh, part of the expert network uh, member team of the World uh, Economic Forum, as well as their innovation hub uh, director for new innovations that solve global grand challenges. And uh, a lot of that has to do with uh, not only new innovations, but uh, synthetic biology and uh, many, many other fields and approaches to solving our grand challenges. So I'm looking forward to our discussion and how we can move forward. Thank you, Mark. And then, uh, yeah, Mark, if you're next. <laughs> sure. Uh, hello, I'm Mark Santolini. Uh, so I'm a researcher at the Center for Research and Interdisciplinarity uh, and co-founder of Juggle uh, and director of research Juggle. Uh, so my background is more in physics and network science, uh, and I've been interested in particular in uh, approaches uh, that use network science to describe social network uh, of communities, and especially communities when uh, communities get large and try to solve a problem altogether. So what happens when you begin to have 500, thousands of people solving a common problem? How do you coordinate? How do you organize uh, these communities? Uh, and so in my research lab, uh, I'm, I'm doing work related to studying open source communities, uh, work related to studying the iGEM community. Uh, we have in particular a project called iGEM Ties, 
uh, which is a team interaction study where we're trying to understand how teams coordinate their tasks uh, and, and uh, we're trying to kind of have an observatory of all the practices of team organization uh, in, in, uh, uh, in, in during a competition and across competition and we're trying to understand how teams learn to improve uh, across competitions. Uh, and I'm also uh, uh, doing research in the lab on how uh, people learn collaboratively. So what are the approaches uh, uh, with which we can diffuse information in a group so that people can collaboratively learn. So it's really about fundamentals of collaborative learning and solving. Uh, and Juggle is, is a place where we're trying to apply that knowledge in order to enhance uh, communities and enhance teams uh, with the right tools so that we can accelerate their uh, ability to solve uh, projects with impact. Uh, and in particular, uh, we're putting an emphasis to have SDGs as core values and core metrics with which uh, project will be, impact will be defined, right? Uh, and so it's, it's, uh, it's a place where we're trying to design in a way collaboration or help kind of, of, of craft uh, large-scale collaboration in, in an open and transparent manner. Uh, and uh, and so we're designing recommender system to do that to really try to enhance collective intelligence. Uh, and the, the last thing that I'm part of, and that's really related to my position also at the, at the CRI in Paris, uh, is uh, how to also involve citizens uh, in in solving SDGs, in collecting data, and in, in creating projects to solve SDGs. Uh, and we have a project called Crowd for SDG. Uh, where it's related to having citizens uh, help design projects and data collection, citizen science projects related to climate resilience, uh, which is also one of the high impact uh, problems where we need to have large scale collaboration and, and a lot of innovation going on. Thank you, Mark. And uh, I'll, I'll pass over to Todd for an introduction. And yeah, so um, <clears throat> good evening, morning, afternoon, wherever your time zone is. Um, so my name is Todd. Um, I'm an environmental scientist by training, um, but I'm currently a research scholar and on the faculty at North Carolina State University, which is in the southeastern portion of the United States. Um, and I've been working in sort of the world of emerging technologies, particularly synthetic biology for about the last 10 years. Um, I sit on a few expert groups for synthetic biology inside the Convention on Biological Diversity. Um, and I'm also on the, the IUCN Task Force of Synthetic Biology. Um, and if, for those that are not familiar, IUCN is the International Union for the Conservation of Nature. And both of those groups, although separately, are really grappling with whether the tools of synthetic biology should be used to sort of solve some of the the challenges that the SDGs are, are focusing on. And then if the answer to that question is yes, how do you actually utilize those tools in a responsible um, and safe manner? And so um, when iGEM began this conversation about trying to sort of have the team sort of begin to focus on the SDGs it was something I was extremely interested in. Um, and that work sort of coalesces with the work of the Human Practices Committee, which I was the former co-chair of. Um, and so I'm really excited to sort of see what the sort of vision, um, creativity, um, and sort of collective knowledge that the iGEM community can bring to this discussion about the sustainability development goals. Um, and that's why we started this prize this year to really try to get you as the iGEM community to begin to kind of focus your energies um, on the SDGs because th the world needs your help. Um, and so we need this sort of collective knowledge to really try to sort of tackle these really complex and complicated challenges. Thank you, Todd. And uh, I'll pass over to, you, to Alex Nielsen, who's joining us here as the uh, co-chair of Rebels. Hello, everyone. I'm Alex Nielsen, and uh, I'm part of the leadership of Rebels, as uh, Will mentioned. And uh, Rebels stands for Rising Entrepreneurs in Biobusiness and Life Science. It's based out of Copenhagen. Uh, tried to spread out a bit, so uh, also been a bit involved with with Slush in Finland, and and uh, yeah, trying to help where we can. But basically, where we are a community that is trying to to do what we can uh, uh, to 
make sure that the, the ecosystem around biotech and life science uh, is thriving. And that happens through different things. Um, one example is a, a lab we just managed to open, uh, which we've worked on for, for many years and, and had a few goes at before as well, but now it's been successful and very happy for that. So if you're in Copenhagen uh, around 28th of August um, this year, please come by for our launch party where it become very official. Um, but beyond that, we also do a lot of other much more informal things uh, with hackathons and, 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 and getting people together, very similar to what iGym is doing, you know, people that just have a passion and a, and creativity and curiosity and, and trying to make them come together as a team to see if, you know, if they can make a difference um, with their with their acumen within technology. Um, and then we, we usually help them a bit in also putting a, some, some business into, into it all, see how you can actually solve a problem with the knowledge you have. Um, on the topic of open science and the SDGs, I've also had the pleasure of starting an, an, uh, an open innovation um, uh, community uh, with, uh, with a large uh, white biotech Danish company called uh, Novozymes. And with them, I also had the pleasure of visiting the UN and talking about the SDGs and how in innovation and technology can, can influence that. And I'd say it's very, very different worlds coming all together when it's big corporates, startups, and the UN and NGOs coming together. So uh, let's stick what you're good at and then you will uh, you'll be successful. Fantastic, thank you for the introductions there. And is, I don't know if Alicia is joining us today, Otis. Uh... No, I think there's been some te uh, technical fault and she couldn't make it, so yeah. So hopefully between our stakeholders and uh, our panelists here this evening, uh, or this afternoon, um, we can cover some of the areas of industry, the sustainable goals, open science, and the iGEM synthetic biology community. Um, our the first question for the panel is really about how can biology and the tools of synthetic biology help contribute towards achieving the sustainable development goals um, as, as they are framed right now? Can, I, can we back up for just a moment? I'd like to jump in and, and say a few words. So just in our introductions, uh, one thing that I've seen, we're, we're five years into the sustainable development goals. It's a, a decade of action now, 2020. We've already had them for five years. They were actually adopted September 24th, uh, uh, 2015. A lot of people, and including you guys, um, don't have the full understanding of how to view them, how to look at them, how to talk about them, how to understand them. And I'd just like to set the tone for all the listeners, all the attendees and everybody. Uh, first and foremost, it's, it's the biggest project ever. It's the world's first ever global moonshot action plan. It's a historical precedence, never happened in our history before that 197 countries came together for the first time ever and agreed on a roadmap and action plan to get us to 2030. And not only did 17 sustainable development goals, but targets and indicators in the hundreds uh, that pretty much lay out how we can go there. The one thing that they did wrong is when they were presented to us, like the slide that Oya showed at the beginning, is they were laid out very linear and ladder, lateral from one to 17. Um, the, the sustainable development goals are a system. They're all tied together in a system. And if uh, we were presented with them very linear, but uh, that gets us in the siloed approach, this linear lateral way of solving our global grand challenges. I want you to know that if you were to just pick one or two sustainable development goals, it is virtually impossible for you to just work on one or two without touching on the others because they are all tied together as a system. So that's kind of the first thing that, that people get mistaken on. Uh, the second big thing is people don't know how they, they were come up with. They were came up with systems dynamic modeling, backcasting, a lot of research and development over three years before 2015 to come up with those. And that 197 countries historical precedents agreed upon those as our roadmap and ratified and presented them before the Paris Agreement. And so uh, if you know anything about politics or, or, or um, 
the UN at all. It's really not laid out from the UN. It's like the 17th Sustainable Development Goal. It's partnership for the goals and 197 countries who represent us as individuals agreed upon that roadmap, which is really important factor to get and to understand because if you know any of those countries, it's hard for two countries to decide where they're gonna eat lunch, let alone 197 on a roadmap for humanity and our earth. So, um, and all 17 are tied to agriculture, food and beverage. That's another thing that a lot of people don't know. So there's a lot of things that we can go in. The great thing that ties iGEM uh, Joggle together is that it's open source, it's transparent, it's a collaborative effort. So in some respects, what you're doing and what you wanna achieve is similar to what the United Nations, to what those 197 countries have done. They've come together to, to reach the goals. Uh, in this time of pandemic that uh, we've had this pause and this reset, uh, what we've seen is that uh, it's, it's a unifying time for us to have a pause and to kind of look at, but that has done a benefit for the sustainable development goals because now we, we used to have Earth Overshoot Day, which was a res resource overshoot. Uh, last year was July 29th. This year just came out two weeks ago, it's August 22nd. So now we've gained about 32 more days just because of that pause and reset. But another big thing that, that a lot of people don't know is this divestment from fossil fuels, from investment in environmental social governance things, which has to do with the sustainable development goals. Those stocks, those divestments, those investments have all outperformed their conventional counterparts. And specifically for iGEM and Jago, what's important to know is the UNICAD, um, which is a United Nations organization that uh, specifically discusses Conference on Trade and Development. It's a UN organization in 2019, published specific documentation about the importance of sy synthetic biology and all the goals and approaches and engineering and, and uh, methods that can be applied towards reaching the sustainable development goals. So there's no, there's no more questioning that we need your help, your, your, uh, your work to make sure that we do it because that is the future we're going on in. We're, we're in a time of metamorphosis. We're like the butterfly, the caterpillar that's in the cocoon. We're at the gooey stage and there's no way back to the caterpillar stage. We've got to make it through that metamorphosis, the, the gooey stage to the, to the butterfly stage, and uh, there's no in-between. And so we're, we're moving forward, and like I said, we're already five years into it. I just wanted to touch on that because it's so vital that you guys know that, that don't get bottlenecked or boxed into the siloed thinking that you just pick one or two SDGs no matter which you choose and what project you choose to work on, whether it has to do with water, food, or many other opportunities there are out there, that it will tie to other SDGs. And that's just the benefit for all of you to, to make sure that you have success in achieving it. I didn't want to steal a lot of time, but I think it's really important that people know that. I, I could talk for hours about this. I also wrote the Sustainable Development Goal Manifesto for the UN, which kind of gives you the vision of what the 2030 SDG uh, will look like December 2030 if we reach all the goals. Uh, the last thing that I have to say about that is, is most people don't understand. It's a global reset. It is the great reset. There's nothing in the SDGs and in that model that says we're going to tweak or just restructure business as usual model. It's a total economic civilization, gender equality, infrastructure overhaul globally. So uh, I, uh, you just have to fathom that. And that goes back to partnership for the goals, 197 countries. You need to realize this is a new world than what we've ever seen before. And that's why I call it a global moonshot or this huge vision. So you guys are working on fabulous things. And I thank you for, for having me here. And I hope, hope this starts us out on the right 
discussion of where we need to go. If I can add a short comment to that, um, what I would say is that I think personally the, uh, the SDGs is a fantastic framework and, and extremely interesting and I'm personally pretty passionate about it. But I do also understand if a lot of people are uh, think it's a lot to grasp um, and I, I believe it's, it's 17 goals and I believe it's 169 sub goals. It is quite a mouthful. Um, what I would say very, very tangibly, if what you normally uh, sit with is something as specific as figuring out a, metab a metabolic pathway uh, and really, you know, trying to nail that, then, you know, you, you, we're now talking about saving the world with all that comes with it. Um, use this as a catalog for your problem solution fit, which is your first step to being a successful entrepreneur. And I think I personally, as an innovator uh, and entrepreneur, really think that is something that the SDGs uh, is, a, is a gift to companies and entrepreneurs uh, in, in, in that, that it really becomes a, a, a great way to look up and see where are some tangible problems that my skills uh, can, uh, can help to address. So if, if nothing else, use it for that. And I would like just to add one thing, and, and I agree with those two comments. Uh, and, and beyond, so I completely agree with your systems vision of 17 SDGs, and I also don't like a lot that they're siloed. Uh, but what I want to say is that behind these SDGs, there's maybe around 240 SDG indicators. So numbers that can quantify a progress, like curves that you can make of, you know, are you, are you going up or down in that indicator? And, and you're talking about uh, early planning that, okay, you need some kind of vision value statement of what you're trying to achieve in terms of impact. The best way to do that when you're an entrepreneur is to have clear numbers, key indicators that can assess whether you get closer to something or not. And so having at least those indicators and being able to add some of those in, 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 in your uh, uh, project statement allows to tell, to quantify how closer you get to something. It's not necessarily easy to measure and, and so there's different approaches to measure and even citizen science approach to measure those uh, but being able to name them and to see whether you get closer is also part of the uh, uh, of the attitude that you're talking about that is useful. Exactly. Thank you. Those are both very, very valid inputs. I totally agree with you. I, I also believe that, you know, what, uh, specifically towards synthetic biology, it's one fabulous toolbox for our complete systems toolbox in order to solve these global grand challenges. So you can break it down into, into that, that silo that without that aspect, we would be missing something to achieve the SDG. So I, I think it f fulfills a very critical role. And I, I thank you for both those views. Can I uh, follow up on that? So um, to, to Mark Buckley, I kind of, I'm going to throw a question back at you as well. So one of the things that um, the teams that if you're interested in the SDG prize and iGEM that, you know, we're going to, we're encouraging you to do, is to try to take a bit of that systems approach and take your project that might be, say, focused on water, for instance, but also evaluate the impact of that across the other SDGs as well. So, Mark, I'm curious if you have any sort of insight or advice on sort of how teams might begin to sort of grapple with that question of sort of the impacts across multiple SDGs and how they might begin to sort of um, evaluate that and then also be able to identify sort of problem areas where if they might be solving something in one area, but it might have a sort of negative impact somewhere else. If, the, if you have any advice on teams on how they could actually begin to sort of look, in, look at that or attempt to start to look at that question. You know, that, so, that's a very good question. And make, oh, Mark Buckley or Mark Santorini. I would, I would go, I mean, both of you can answer, but I, would, <laughs> I was going to go Mark, towards Mark Buckley anyway. <laughs> okay. Uh, I think we can both answer it pretty yeah. good. Uh, then the entire uh, world's international organizations switched to a systems view approach to solving global grand challenges in 2018. That was a, big major shift. The original thinking and research out there 
about uh, this started at the Club of Rome and, and the limits to growth in 1972, MIT and the World Model 3. Um, but in 2018, all international organizations switched from this linear siloed a lateral approach to solving problems to a systematic approach, a systems dynamic uh, approach to solving these models and, or solving these problems that we have. And specifically for synthetic biology and um, science and what you guys are doing is very complex. The, the level that you guys are doing it differently by going open source, transparent, decentralized type of a model to this, uh, this collaborative research is, is really something new that's needed or th to use these emerging technologies, but it can be applied to every area, flavors and fragrances, pharma, uh, pharmaceutical, food la labeling, cosmetic, uh, uh, different certifications that we have out there, uh, bio brick engineering, uh, materials, uh, design tools, construction tools. Uh, I could go on and on and on and on. And, and this unit, uh, um, UNICAD that I are I might might not, not even be seeing it UNCTAD uh, conference for trade and development and uh, basically it's a UN organization that's one of the hundreds of interagencies that has specific stuff specifically about uh, 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 synthetic biology and uh, what IGM is doing. And there's a plethora of research and, and knowledge in there uh, that you, you can look at, but do not be limited. Do not think uh, that, that the information's out there. Did I answer that question or did I still leave it open? Where, where do I need to continue to ask or, or, or answer or Mark, can Mark answer it? Yeah, so I mean, it might not be answerable. So I think, you know, so, in terms of if we break it down more simplistically for an iGEM team that's just starting out and trying to figure out what project they want to work on and you know say they figure okay say they said okay we're going to work on water water um, purification or something along those lines I was I was curious if you have any advice on how they can sort of begin to try to use some of those indicators and metrics across the SDGs so they're not so they're not falling into that trap that you mentioned before about getting locked in to just the one. There, there was one more thing around that I did want to mention is that, is that there's a lot of what we're now calling uh, SDG washing, where you're focused in on one or two and you're doing really good at solving those, but you're hurting a bunch of the others or doing a lot of detriment on the other side. And that's that's why I started out with this systems view approach, because if you don't take that systems approach, you can get this hyper focus on one area and say, yeah, this is working great, super, but oh, we're polluting all our oceans or ruin our biosphere in, in this aspect because of what we've done. And so it needs this more holistic uh, mm -hmm. systems approach. That's one. Second is the data. And I think Mark is uh, on his edge of his chair to, to tell us about that is, the UN is also just now getting up to speed with presenting us with collective data and intelligence out there in one source that's also open and available to everybody to use to get that information. It's been very shoddy to this point. There's a few places, a few dashboards and places to go for that. But I must honestly say, even at this stage in the game, it's still not where it needs to be to give us that true uh, that true point. I can send some links over later that uh, can refer you guys to to some good places to look at right now. Um, but maybe Mark has some other ideas of what's available and out there. I can maybe just give a resource uh, that that kind of complements what you have said. Uh, I can actually even maybe can I even do that? I can maybe share my screen to show you uh, because I. I mean, I mean, this is a bit what you're talking about, right? This is this is about uh, a network of SDGs. So the sustainable goal, it's not, it's, it's a whole. All of them are linked somehow, uh, and they can have positive, negative interaction. And so there's been work uh, on what is called uh, uh, SDG interactions, which is you know, is one going to cancel another? 
Uh, and so there are white papers uh, and reports on that uh, where they're actually looking at whether, you know, some, some contribution will cancel others or will be reinforcing others and they have scoring metrics to explore that. And I can give the link because they, they, they give actually uh, content on, on these interactions. So if you're working on something specific, you can put it in a network context where you also already have intelligence that has been produced uh, about that. Uh, and that might be something that could be useful uh, as a resource as well. I also have a long list that I'll give you. I mean, there's a lot out there and, yes. and a lot of it currently is being used, honestly, not necessarily for the science aspect of it. It's being used for environmental social governance reporting to do ISO uh, uh, certification reporting to do GRI, uh, the gl global reporting index and to do their uh, sustainability and, and um, annual report reporting. And so they go through and, and collect some of that uh, data as well. Uh, there is some out there, it's not where it needs to be, but it's coming. Um, well, I hope we, we, we I, the beginning of this year in January, we really kind of hit the exponential curve on a lot of actions and, and transitions, monies towards that. Now the data is coming. One of the other projects I work with for the UN is called the Dig Digital Ecosystem for the Earth, geospatial data that, that we can collect down and then get a lot of information on. Similar projects like that are in, in the sciences and, and what you can use towards the SDGs. So. I, I'm, afraid, I'm afraid we're coming a little up to time. And I want to give Victor, who's joined in place of Alicia, uh, the chance to just quickly introduce himself and chime in if he has any questions or suggestions. Uh, the, the three kind of questions that the panel is discussing are how biology relates to the SDGs, um, how open science can contribute to this, and any advice and insights that you think are relevant for the current teams. Um, so we can touch on that quickly and then open up to Q&A from the, from, the, from the participants. But uh, Victor... Uh, yeah, did you hear me well? Yeah, okay. So uh, thank you for uh, giving me the opportunity to replace uh, Alicia for uh, representing the French Association for Synthetic Biology. Um, to briefly uh, give uh, some information on me, I'm just a research engineer that work on genetic engineering, or string engineering, or metabolism engineering. And I generally worked on uh, the valorization of uh, biomass using synthetic biology. So in the association, we work on vulgarization because we strongly believe that the education of people are very uh, important to make uh, the synthetic biology live in this world, to make all the habits change, mentality change. Um, for concerning the synthetic biology, we think that uh, they have a very great potential that all Mark Buckley said, or to Quinton said, because we are very linked to the bioproduction for making supplements, therapeutics, beautiful materials. Um, in order to promote this work, uh, I will uh, advise for IGEM teams to very take care of life cycle analysis because generally they create a kind of product. Um, they need to think environmentally and eco-friendly. Um, I think it is yes, very linked to many others. So if we educate and make life cycle analysis very good, we can uh, achieve a lot of S SDGs. Thank you, Victor. And uh, hopefully that gives us a chance in this uh, last bit of the panel here to open up to the audience and the participants, especially any of the iGEM teams joining this year, uh, if they have any questions around how to get started with this framework and what the special prize involves uh, and how Jogal as a platform can help you uh, progress in your project. So I think we have a few questions in the uh, Q&A box. Uh, Aguia has asked, as a first-time participant team, how uh, intensive should our project be whilst integrating the SDGs? As just mentioned, 
that we should not only focus on one specific SDG, but see the positive net impacts on all the others. Uh, what kind of work and data is iGEM looking, looking for? So maybe I'll, I'll start on this. So um, my first response to that is that this is the first year that iGEM is trying this. So it's a bit of an experiment, but I think my answer would be is to not worry so much about the specifics. I think one of the great um, benefits and I think the excitement about this partnership with Joggle is that one of the metrics actually that this special prize is gonna be measured on is how well you're actually setting up your project to be able to, for others to continue to work on it, right? And so we know you're not gonna solve all of these problems in one iGEM project this year. Um, um, maybe you will, but you know, for the, for realistically, like that's not what we're trying to see. What we're trying to see is one, like your thought process, sort of, and, and then trying to have measurable sort of impacts on the type of project that you're thinking about, the different types of data you might collect. And then I think most critically is how you're actually enabling others to actually use that work that you've done. So to live up to some of the, um, the, you know, the underlying sort of ethics of iGEM, which is this open science, open access, and to work with others. So others can take what you've done and either continue to work with you, but to bring others in to kind of move those projects forward. Um, and so particularly for this year, where a lot of teams are not gonna even have access to a wet lab, um, we're also encouraging you to look back at past iGEM projects and see how you can actually sort of build upon those or move those more into this realm of, of working within the SDG system to try to then sort of promote those types of projects so others can continue to work on it. So the short answer to your question is, is, is we're actually not exactly sure yet. We're still developing out, you know, in terms of what the, what the iGEM teams might be interested in is how we're actually gonna evaluate you. Um, that is still being worked out. Um, but I think you should think about this pr particular prize as a way to sort of be part of the broader sort of global community of working towards what, what Mark had mentioned early on about collectively trying to solve some of these problems and setting your project up, um, not just for success for your own project for this year, but for real success moving forward in the more global community um, and working more towards this sort of collective science. One, one great um, basis to start before you start anything, it's not about the, uh, synthetic biology, the, the things that you solve in the future. So it's a different twist on brands or products or what your, your end result is going to be that matters the most. So I've come up with a new water filtration system or I've come up with new, um, a new uh, engineering approach, a genome engineering approach or um, whatever it is. It's not always about that that's the key it's about how you produced to reach that result if you if your process from beginning to end doesn't hurt the environment doesn't have a ripple effect on resources or other unilaterally or ripple effect problems then uh your product your your end result is going to be well and so it's really about how we produce and that's what we struggle with today is a lot of our processes that we use in any industries, the way we produce things is very harmful for the environment and is actually counterintuitive to, to, the, to reaching the sustainable development goals. So it's not about the, the electric cars of the future, it's how we produce those electric cars. So if you come up with some solution and boy, it saves on resources, it cuts them down, it's more efficient, it's better, then you've automatically in the end won, won the goal that you want to reach. And, and so I don't know if I'm saying it right, but it's really about the processes that you take to get there. Are they sound? Are, are they more efficient? Are they better for the environment and human, human health in the future? I feel that's one of the, the answers to one of the questions around how biology can help in the sense that biology is inherently a very... Um, 
uh, so, you know, not only is it scalable, but it also exists in a life cycle. It, it goes, it can be decomposed, it can be reused. It is circular by its nature. And I think that's where we see the potential of biology in addressing some of the SDGs uh, and other areas of sustainability because it can replace existing processes that are coming from non-renewable resources. That is uh, such a vital thing to have to, to get there. You know, uh, uh, Winston Churchill wrote a, a paper called 50 Years Hence and talked about the future of meat, that the way we produce meat and produce things is so inefficient. There's such a waste of resource and it's inefficient. It's time we get up to speed on, on how we do that. And I think the key, one of the silver bullets of the system is synthetic biology and the way you guys do it. So I wish I, I, I'm just an, enough to be dangerous, knowledgeable about synthetic biology. So by, by no means, uh, uh, I'm just trying to steer you in the right way. But So we also have a question here from Pedro in the, in the question asking, so regarding the Jogal platform, as we view uh, Mark Santolini, it's uh, we could, we're not gonna use it as a way of fostering collaboration between iGEM teams and the metal criteria, but also a way of addressing the SDGs through teamwork through the iGEM SDG prize. So maybe Todd can also add to that as well as you, Mark. I would say the short answer is yes, <laughs> to, to use that platform. That's sort of how we're envisioning it. And just to maybe give some, some, uh, some additional context to the SDG prize. So um, in the future, when we can hopefully all meet again in person, part of the idea of what the jamborees will actually entail is actual kind of live iteration of these projects around SDGs when we're all actually together. Um, so one great thing about the Joggle platform is that that enables you to do that sort of virtually, sort of right now, um, and to sort of actually look outside of iGEM as well and tap into the vast sort of knowledge, expertise, and creativity and interest that's out there in the sort of broader, you know, DIY bio, citizen science movement, and, and others who might not know about iGEM or might, or, but have similar interests and have similar project ideas. And so you use that platform to sort of find those people and then start working together with them. And I'd say better. Uh, indeed, it's a place not just for the IGEM community, but where other communities are here. Uh, you know, data science, visualization communities, makers. Uh, we have coordinators, like people with like maybe softer skill sets that are more about human coordination rather than just, you know, project uh, production. Uh, and, and, and these are people or these are projects with, on, on which you can build or with whom you can collaborate and coordinate uh, because that's exactly what we're trying to do, right? To actually uh, have a framework where people can, can go together towards the same goal. So I absolutely agree with Todd on that. Uh, so yes. <laughs> And I, we're thankfully Mark will be helping us with a quick onboarding of how Jogal works at uh, four o'clock uh, European time. And uh, yeah, I, I think this gives a chance for us to ask each of the panelists, um, what advice would you have for the teams this year as they go forward with their projects uh, and rounding the topics that we discussed? I can perhaps start because then maybe someone from uh, iGEM can then uh, afterwards say, don't listen to that guy. Um, uh, because I, my advice would actually go a little bit against what has been said so far uh, and be a little bit, what I would do is I would be, a, I would not try to uh, solve for all 17. I would try to find a tangible problem that I could solve well. And then the rest I'm sure would come when you're inherently using Symbio because like Will alluded to, it's, a, uh, it's just inherently a very sustainable way of producing. Uh, in that you would use fermentation, so that if you're making a new food where you would address, um, uh, um, you know, uh, no one should be uh, um, hungry, then you would also uh, have something on, uh, you know, uh, uh, land and biodiversity because you wouldn't use animals and so on and so forth. So I'm sure you would be able to, on the back of your solution, find other ways where you would touch on, on, on the on the other SDGs. Um, so I think it's important to think about this. I think it's important for a problem solution fit. I think it's really great. So I would, I would encourage to find something that you're passionate about solving and then think big about how to solve it um, instead of trying to solve for everything. Because like you say, in the user space, 
if you try to be something for everyone, you're nothing to everyone. Um, so don't do that with the SDGs. Make big impact with something. That would be my advice. And then the IGM can say, don't listen to that if, if you think it's something else your foundation do. Uh, I and think that I think you should listen to it. I think that sounds right. I'm not by no means get me wrong that we should address all 17. I think you should do exactly how you said. You find where your your specialty, your desire, your passion of what you want to solve or address, like precision fermentation, the example you used, um, which is only a 3.3 percent to to crack that code in order to make milk or cheese or what whatever else you go into. And then you'll be surprised to know that by doing that, you're addressing 11 of the SDGs, which are intrinsically tied to precision fermentation. I just don't want you to say we're solving poverty and, and that's it. Because if you do that, you're going to touch on the other words. But the reversal is also true. But some people get really uh, blinders on narrow sided. They get focused and say, that's it. Well, that's just not how it works. And so uh, I, I'm, I, you guys are a much higher level, much further advanced than, than I could ever imagine. So I'm sure that that won't be the case, but I just want to dispel the myth because in the business world and a lot of the politicians were, they're still dealing in these silos. They're very stuck. They don't have a clue how to look or understand them. So that's, I think that was spot on. Thank you so much, Alex. Yeah, I'll just jump in on that too. I would say, you know, the other advice I would give is to not lose sight of, you know, solving those local problems that are actually in your own communities, that those very much um, fit in with and help to move us more towards um, addressing the SDG. So also don't think that your project has to be this sort of um, global solution per se, that solving those very local issues can also have a, a, a broader impact um, to the SDGs, not only for your own local communities, but then also hopefully as more people sort of see your project using these platforms, potentially adopting those solutions and adapting them to their own individual and, and community situations that can then also help us move us towards um, solving some of the, the SDGs in a systematic way. Yeah. I've I totally agree with all the speakers. Uh, as a part of uh, iGEM competition in 2016, I worked on the Quantify project that aimed to produce a kind of drone that uh, carry uh, microorganisms that could detect pollu air pollution, a specific pollutant in the air sampling. And in this project, was very cool to, pro, to, to make the drone, to make all experiments for the bioluminescence uh, detection and correlation with the pollutant. Um, but as an advice for uh, iGEM uh, people, I think uh, we have not enough uh, focus on a SDG because the drone uh, was totally um, made of plastic or not renewable uh, resources. Um, I think it's very important to, as I said at first when I present myself, uh, to focus really on life cycle analysis. So use uh, materials that could be biodegradable to think uh, how in the process, how do we make the, all the process green, as said Mark Buckley. I think it's all in the process if we could change the world be sustainable. And Mark, if you uh, have any, any words, I know you're about to lead the tutorial. <laughs> I mean, I guess I have, uh, I, I think it was a very good conclusion sentence it just gave. Uh, but what I was, I would, I, I mean, I agree with Alex and I think an amazing achievement already would have to, would have to be, to have one quantifiable number a quantifiable metric that you can pick in those 240 metrics and to discuss how you change that metric and how it can impact as a discussion other metric uh, as kind of like a, a global view so that the next ones that take on your project they know the context and they know how to pursue your work and they know the context as well uh, and that would be already a success obviously
a very quantifiable uh, aspect. One, one thing that Todd said that I just want to conclude with is, is that it really needs to be local. It needs to be indigenous to who you are to, you know, um, it, it will be a bad job if you're doing it for someone else or because you think you're creating the silver bullet. You need to do something that you're passionate about, you're interested in. And most of the innovations that I've ever seen are, are ones that have affected someone personally. Those are the best and they're the most complete solutions um, where, you know, whether it's a solar sanitation or electricity free uh, uh, refrigeration, or if it's $1 eyeglasses, those are all things that have affected someone personally. And they said, I've got to fix this problem. And if you can find something that bothers you, that you see that's wrong, that you're passionate about, or you can become passionate about, boy, that's the way to solve it. And you can have a hell of a lot of fun doing it in the process. So uh, I, I like that local uh, response. And through those little actions, you can really have the big ripple effect to, to solve global problems in the end. So. I feel that is a fantastic way to, to end our panel time here today. Uh, thank you to all of our panelists for sharing their insights and uh, advice. Um, I, I think there's a good list of already links that you can look at in the chat box for those of you uh, who are trying to follow some of the, the references we've gone through. We'll also follow up uh, on this recording on any, any questions and any resources we can share. The, uh, the SDG subcommittee will be here to support throughout the uh, current season uh, and help out with other check-in events. And now we'll lead into the kind of how to work with Jogal and how to onboard on the, on the Jogal platform as we try and support you on your journey from uh, your project where you are today to the Jamboree and the, uh, yeah, the, the end of this year's uh, IGM season. So thank you once again to all our panelists. And uh, yep, for those of you who'd like to stay now for the Jogal tutorial, please stay on the line. Otherwise, thank you for your time and look forward to working with you. Thanks and good luck. Take care.